Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another episode of Barbecue Buyer's Guide. This one about offset smokers on casters with cylindrical fireboxes. In the near future, I'm going to do one about offset smokers with square or cubic fireboxes. So keep your eyes open for that. And here are some chapter times for this video. Uh, also, if you would, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, if I've helped you find the smoker that you want and you're feeling generous, I've got a PayPal.me link down in the description. Um, I'm saving up for my own smoker and any little bit helps. So thank you so much. All right. And here we have our map. Uh, of the location of these companies that make these offset smokers. So you're going to notice uh, we have our first international uh, company up there at the very top with Capo Cooktops. Um, he's a one-man operation, Rob. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about that. On the East Coast here, we have Workhorse Pits just north of Atlanta, now, this is crazy. I mean, really crazy. Um, they're in Cumming, Georgia, which is my hometown. You know, I live in North Carolina now, but I grew up there uh, in Cumming, Georgia. I know exactly where they're at on, on Georgia 400 Highway up off of Exit 17. My parents are still there living off of Exit 14. Um, so really crazy. I'm going to have to go swing by their factory the next time I visit my folks. Um, so yeah, um, and now we have over here Gator Pit of Texas and Houston, and then you know Austin and Lockhart are so close together that I had to blow up that that part of the map there. Um, and we got Franklin Barbecue Pits there out of Austin and Mill Scale out of Lockhart. All right, and we're gonna start off with Gator Pit of Texas. Um, they are maybe the most different out of, of the ones that we're going to cover today. Uh, and you see that Texas 1845, um, and it starts at 2,295. And then we have the Gator Pits Party Edition, which starts at uh, 2,795. Both good looking offset smokers uh, with some very interesting features. And here we go. And if you see any features on here that I don't mention, it may be that they're optional features. Uh, so you'll see that in the next slide. But let's just take a look. Um, one very interesting feature of the Gator Pits is that main chamber charcoal door. So you have a, a door that will open from the main chamber on the left hand side there. And that is so that you have access to um, the charcoal grates down in the bottom of the main chamber. And that's basically if you want to turn it into a grill, uh, you know, with that direct heat instead of a smoker. Now, a lot of offset smokers have, you know, an option for that uh, charcoal grate in the main chamber. But uh, none that I've seen have had that um, door as well. So that's very unique to Gator Pit of Texas. You see that reinforced main chamber um, charcoal grate there. They have reinforced the grate also in in the firebox, making it really strong so it's not going to wear out on you. They have a second level rack, which is standard. Um, you can pull those out, um, pull out bottom rack. A lot of the offset smokers that you're going to come across, you know, um, Maybe the second level is pull out, but the bottom level is not. The wrap around shelf is only on the party edition. It gives you a whole lot of space to put things on there, uh, as well as, you know, the heat coming off of that firebox. You can keep something that you want hot right there, which is similar to the pot warmers that some of these offsets have. But yeah, that heat rising is going to, you know, maybe cook or just keep warm some food. They use stainless steel on the springs for their handle. Um, you know, other makers may only use, you know, um, some chrome plating or something, but those are fully stainless steel. Uh, they have turn wheel dampers. So that wheel there is going to turn out and back in to allow air into the firebox. And they, they seem to make a lot of... Um, a lot out of their one inch flanges. And a flange is just kind of that lip for any of the doors. 
Uh, all of the, the smokers that we're going to talk about have flanging, um, but I'm not sure that they all have one inch flanging. So that, that one inch size may be a, a bigger deal. Um, and that's, you know, to keep that heat in to the offset smoker. Now, they have so many optional additions. I couldn't put pictures on all of them. Uh, they've got D-rings for anti-theft or pulling, I guess, or securing. Yeah, uh, more thermometer probe holes, um, foot brakes uh, to keep those wheels from sliding around. If you want the ash rake or, or fire poker. The ball valve drain that we saw on uh, the previous slide, um, you can make it so that the party edition has you know, just one door and you know that's gonna make a, a bigger rack. That's one thing that the party edition has over all the other smokers that we're gonna talk about today. That double door is going to, to make it so the doors are lighter and easier to open. Um, that birdhouse smokestack we saw on the previous picture as well. Um, if you want to double the, uh, thickness of the firebox, uh, or if you want to change it to the square firebox, we already talked about square fireboxes and that'll be something in future episodes. All right. They have a lot of different little things that you can add these, uh, like a paper towel hanger, utensil hanger. All right. And the additions, they just keep going. And these are only for the party edition. Apparently that Texas 1845, you know, they just wanted to keep things pretty standard. But for the party edition, uh, you know, quarter inch uh, locking tuning plates. All right. Um, and then, you know, you can make this thing reverse flow. I don't know exactly how that's going to work with having that charcoal grate at the bottom of the main chamber. Um, but yeah, they, they will weld in some steel plates in there to give you a reverse flow. If you want a solid plate for that front shelf, um, stainless steel front shelf as well, you know, that's extra money out. You can really trick this thing out for these optional additions. You know, if you want a fryer put on there, a tank holder, so um, guru adapter, uh, it's it's almost seems unending uh, with how much you can do to upgrade uh, this party edition. Um, but that's it's going to all add up, so just keep that in mind also. One other thing I wanted to say about Gator Pit of Texas is I wasn't really wild about their website design here. Um, you know, you come in here and it's um, a little overwhelming. I can't really tell what I'm looking at. You know, after a while, maybe it sort of sets in. But yeah, I don't even know if I picked the right smokers to go in this episode. Um, all of this is kind of so overwhelming. Which ones are the smallest? They have the pellet cookers sort of in there along with the offsets with, uh, you know, the fridge style verticals. Uh, I, they, they do separate the grills down here. But just for comparison, look at um, Horizon here. You're going down the page instantly you can tell you know these are the grills offset smokers starting from smallest progressively getting larger and more complex as you go down the page uh and then you know they do break off into those smaller whatever kind of grills those are but yeah um it would be really nice to see um a little bit better organization and maybe a, a different style here in this this gator pits website uh because when I look at it now, I just really have a hard time figuring out, you know, which one's bigger or smaller or, or what, you know, triple door limo and party editions way over here. Texas 1845 is way up here, even though they're not that much different in size. It's just just a difficult kind of thing. All right. And now we have the mill scale 94 gallon smoker. Uh, it comes in at that 4,150. Uh, this is a really different kind of smoker than, than the Gator Pits. Um, it comes from a different, you know, ideology, I guess. So the, the Gator Pits of Texas, they're all about, you know, these pits for the customers. Whereas Mill Scale is coming from a commercial uh, applications side of things 
uh, for making commercial smokers. Um, they keep things really simple, really easy, but very good quality. So um, very different mindset going on there, you know. Um, and this is this is their smoker, you know. It has dual function hinge. So it act, acts sort of as a doorstop when you pull up that lid. You know, it's got the drain one tell true thermometer there. Um, stack handle. Uh, you do notice that they've built in a shelf for the water pan. Uh, we're going to see that also on the Franklin's barbecue pit. And the firebox door also acts as the damper. So, you know, you have to just open and close it to, to let air in. And right down there, eight inch casters. Um, and that's it. This is it. There are no additional optional features. There's nothing, nothing to spend more money on. This is the mill scale 94 gallon offset smoker, right? Um, you know, they make a very quality smoker, um, but that's it. Uh, finished. You know, so I was emailing back and forth with mill scale and they... They tell me that this is a multi-generational smoker, so uh, the quality is going to be such that you can pass it down to the next generation and, and the one after that. The real question then becomes, are these other smokers, are they not that? Are they going to break down at some point? And that's just something that we'll have to keep in mind. All right, so now we're going on to the workhorse pits. And you're going to notice that they have um, a very similar design in some ways to that mill scale uh, with a few notable differences. Uh, we have that 1957 there, which costs $1,956. Part of me just wants them to add that one more dollar so it's 1957, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's 1956. And then uh, the 1969 up there for 2157 now, I'm not really featuring that smoker in, uh, you know, the grill v. grill section, but just know that it's there. Um, and then the Workhorse uh, 1975, which starts at 2,532. All right, let's look at some of these key features. Uh, we have that horseshoe door stop there. Uh, the fold down stack. Wow, what an innovation, really. Uh, you know, um, part of the thing about these smokers, the taller the stack, you know, the more vacuum is going to be created in that chamber when the fire is sucking in the oxygen. And when that vacuum's created, that's the stronger air current coming through your offset smoker. So a lot of people extend their stacks just so that they can have, you know, better airflow. So this is probably going to be one of the tallest stacks you're going to find for a smoker this size. And, and really because they have to ship these things, you know. Um, so they have to figure a way to get the stack in there if they take it off or make it short enough if they keep it on, right? Um, but there's a probe port there um, that comes standard. They've got two tell true thermometers butterfly damper um so yeah the the mill house didn't even have any sort of damper except for the door um so this one goes a little bit further on that all right and you see that dual function stand there and damper handle um for that fold down stack these pits are th around three eighths inch steel almost three eighths inch steel which is you know super thick um, I think the thickest metal for any smoker, uh, in this episode. So they have, they have some really good thick steel on, on these. Now there's a lot of optional additions here, but it's not to the point of being overwhelming, which is kind of what, you know, we had for the gator pits. Um, they do have these wheels that they call pneumatic. Um, and I've been in contact with them. There, there isn't any actual air in these pneumatic wheels. Uh, pneumatic means air, you know, but, but they don't lose air, that's to say. Um, and then apparently they're really good for moving, moving the pit around. 
If you want the six inch steel wheels, they're um, 135 extra. They don't do them for the 1975. Uh, apparently they say that a lot of people really like those base pneumatic wheels I and mean, that they work really well. So, um, you know, I, I think that I would skip over those, those steel wheels, but if you want the wagon, which you see the wagon there, uh, you know, if you want to take it all over your backyard, uh, it's, uh, an extra $717. So, and they've got that side cart, mild steel for 132, stainless for 231. Most offset smokers have the shelving out by the chamber, like we saw with the gator pits. So this is very different. Um, and, and they definitely have a very interesting design there. Seem to have made a horse. Um, and and the numbers kind of fit together there. So very cool design, but sort of an odd placement and that you kind of have to reach around to there for it. Now, another very distinctive feature on this pit is the linseed finish, right? It's kind of that brownish, um, brownish finish on here. And that in and of itself is going to save a whole lot of money for you. You can see that that black powder coating is an extra $848. Um, and, you know, the, the linseed oil finish has a lot of pros. You know, it's cheaper. That's one thing. But it's also something that you can renew and need to renew, I guess, every year. Uh, they, they say it takes about 30 minutes adding the oil. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly like what it is to put on the oil in the first place, but I watched their video on that. And you need, um, you know, like a propane torch to heat up the metal and, uh, you know, a sponge with the linseed oil to put it on. But, you know, when you do it, it looks just like brand new every time. So, you know, four or five years down the road, uh, this pit's going to look really great still. Whereas, you know, the, the powder coating... Every scuff or scratch, every time you light up that fire and it kind of wears on the on that paint, it's going to dull it out. Um, this linseed coating is not like that and, you know, is something that will renew and renew and renew. All right, we got the top pullout rack as well. You see the prices go up uh, for each model, 84 for the 57 and 111 for the 75. Also $111 for that Cowboy Firebox. And, and Cowboy seems like a, a branding kind of thing, you know, sort of a romantic kind of idea of, of grilling in, in the Firebox. Everything I've heard is that not many people do their grilling in the Firebox like that. As soon as you think, hey, I'll just save that $111, you start thinking, you know, there's going to be that one time that you're going to want it, right? <laughs> um, and so you just feel like you're going to miss out if you don't get it. You know, uh, if you have a really good gas grill or something, you might you might forgo that. Now, this is one other thing that I found really impressive from Workhorse. They have an, an in-house delivery service that is more economical than freight lines that, that are normally used. And they've color-coded the country and, uh, you know, they give you what it is for each of those models. That T down there, the 1975 T, they have a trailer version of the 1975 and the wagon version also, uh, you know, incurs more cost as well. And if you're, you know, there in Georgia, uh, it's the lowest cost. Except they do have a 4% state sales tax that you have to pay, which, you know, adds a bit to it as well. All right. And now we're on to Franklin Barbecue Pits. Yeah. So it appears that they have, you know, the raw there at 3450 um, and I don't know if they added a linseed oil um, coating to that or not. But they do have the powder coating. Um, and again, you see the difference between powder and raw or the linseed oil, whichever that is. You know, it's, it's $550. 
you know, you might have been under the impression that the price was cheaper than that, but this is the price that is current. Um, I emailed them and they emailed me back and these are the prices. Now, the way that it works, however, is that you get on a waiting list. And right now, the waiting list for these pits is about a year and a half to two years. And then when your name comes up, then they're going to give you the price, which, you know, could be more by then or it could be less. Uh, I imagine it may have to do with steel prices, which are, are high right now. Um, so, you know, you could be hoping that it, it would be less than. All right. Now, these are some of the key features. You know, it has 5 16 inch steel on the main chamber. Now, that's not quite as thick as the 3 8 uh, that we saw previous, but it's it's thicker than a quarter. Now, the, the other thing about heat retention is that they use quarter inch steel on the, the firebox, but they have insulated it. So there's, there's insulation in there as well. The firebox is going to hold really good heat. Now, the, the stack is removable. I watched uh, Jeremy Yoder unpack his, and apparently the stack you know comes in the chamber. So you got to put it on after that. It's got the tell true thermometer um, and a shelf for a water pan, right? And then uh, built in ventilation for the firebox. So you see, you know, the words Franklin there and uh, those those holes on the bottom. You cannot close those off. So it's it's interesting. You know, you do want that really great airflow. Uh, I've even preached that on this channel. Airflow, 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 right? On this one, there is no option of not having the airflow uh, being cut off. Also, the shelf of the water pan, in, in a sense, it kind of makes me feel like this pit has, you know, the training wheels on. <laughs> but those are, are things that you should probably be doing anyway, using the, the water pan and getting good ventilation. So, you know, it's for, forgivable that way. And, uh, you know, Jeremy Yoder, he, he did his biscuit test on this uh, pretty recently. Um, and even though you have that water pan shelf, uh, the space right there next to the firebox or, or the next to the shelf uh, still burnt his biscuits. So, <laughs> um, yeah. All right. And now we've got the Capo cooktops. Um, it's a really good looking offset smoker. You know, I tried try my best to cut these things out um, using graphic design software, but sometimes they, they look a little bit messy, especially if the background's uh, really sort of complex. I do my best, though. So here it is. Um, you can see that slightly better picture there where I haven't cut anything out. So and the price that he quoted me was in Canadian dollars um, and it was forty three hundred. Uh, you look at that graph up there. You see it goes up and down and down and up. Right now, it's a little bit high against the U.S. dollar. Um, so if you're in the United States and you're wanting this smoker, I would keep um, a good eye on, on the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar. And maybe a lot of people in the northern part of, of the United States do keep an eye on that uh, just for these kind of opportunities. Uh, being in North Carolina, I don't. But yeah, if you can find an opportunity wherein the, the U.S. dollar is strong, that might be a good time to message Rob via Facebook. You can find him on Facebook uh, if you say, search for Capo Cooktops. Some of the, the features here, you know, that big T is a um, doorstop, actually. And I, I don't think that the water jet... Uh, shelf that's above the fire box. I don't think that that comes standard. Uh, he did quote me 440 Canadian for a second level grate. Um, I wanted to get more uh, details out of Rob about these these cooktops, about this smoker in particular, uh, and he decided that he wouldn't commit to anything since uh, the the prices for steel were so volatile these days. Hopefully, they even out. And hopefully uh, you'll see see some details on this smoker if you look it up or call him. Um, you know, hopefully he he will be able to k commit some numbers to to the features here. It's a good looking smoker, though. I have to say that. And now it's time for grill v grill. 
Starting off, the Franklin Barbecue Pits versus Workhorse 1957 versus Gator Pits of Texas 1845. All right, and we've got those starting prices, $3,450 for uh, the Franklin Pits, and that's raw, not with the powder coating. Then we have the Workhorse 1957, our $1,956 for the base price. Now, to make it comparable to the Gator Pits Texas 1845, we've added the Cowboy Firebox for uh, direct grilling. We've added the Top Rack which the Gator Pits of Texas also has. And we've added the side cart for shelving. And you see that the Gator Pits of Texas 1845 does have that front shelf. Um, so we have 2,283 on that workhorse, 1957, and 2,295 on the Gator Pits of Texas, 1845. All right, and that gives the win to the workhorse. All right, and then we have steel thickness, 5 by 16 inch on the main chamber and insulated firebox for the Franklin, almost 3 8 inch for the workhorse, and a quarter inch for the Gator Pits. And I'm going to give it to both Franklin and the workhorse because, um, you know, they both have some really good pluses on heat retention and thickness there. All right, and now we have the weight. So 600 pounds for that Franklin Barbecue Pit, 670 for um, the Workhorse 1957, and 550 for the Gator Pits of Texas. All right, and the Workhorse, you know, that 670 probably comes from that very thick metal. Uh, and so we're going to get dollar per pound. That really kind of gives you the value, um, you know, you're getting for metal there. So it's 575 a pound for Franklin, which is very high um it's it's extremely high this franklin barbecue pits is going to be one of the most expensive ones you're going to see we got 292 uh per pound um without all those additions and 341 with the additions and then 417 per pound for the gator pits all right and now we've got the uh inches for the main grate, 684 inches squared for that Franklin barbecue pits. Um, and remember that it has that, that shelf right next to the firebox for a water pan. So that's cutting off some of the space there that it could have had a grate in. Um, 693 for the workhorse 1957 and 721 for that Gator Pits of Texas 1845. Um, so that is the winner. All right, and now we've got, um, you know, the dollar per inches squared for the main grate. So 518 for the Franklin Pits. It's an expensive one, like we've said before. 282 for the workhorse, 329 with all of those additions. And if you wanted the steel wheels, make it all steel all around, it would uh, come out to 349. Now, if you look at the Gator Pits of Texas there, it is $3.18. So um, that's going to give us a winner for Gator Pits of Texas, $18.45. Um, and then compared to the Franklin, that $2.82 also is going get, to get a point. All right. And no option for second shell for the Franklin. Uh, 256.5 for the second shelf on the workhorse, 312 for the Gator Pits of Texas, 1845, which gives another win for Gator Pits. All right. And uh, then when we combine it all, you know, 949.5 for the workhorse, workhorse 1957, and then 1033.5 for the Gator Pits. A lot of inch, inches there for the uh, 1845. All right. And $2.40 per inches squared there for the workhorse. Uh, and $2.22 dollars per combined inches there. So the Gator Pits is going to take that as well. All right. And then lastly, we've got this firebox. And so the Franklin Barbecue Pits is actually going to win this one with 20 by 22.27. 
and uh, Workhorse is uh, going to be next in line, 20 by 21. And then Gator Pits of Texas, the 20 by 20. All right. And now we have a question of science. So there's even more to think about when thinking about these pits. Uh, the stack height, like we, we said before, so you see that 3.5 and the 4. Those are estimates on my part just by looking at the pit and, and the dimensions that they do give you. Um, I do know for, for a fact that that two feet, I believe, is, is um, the actual one for Gator Pits of Texas, uh, 1845. It's the same for the party edition as well. And I think that, that may be a shipping thing, you know, or else they might have, have done a, a larger one. And that's going to affect the airflow. So what, what I guess you're asking yourself is, how well are these things going to work besides just, you know, the inches and the steel thickness uh, and workhorse, they, they talk about these computational fluid dynamics that they have. So I guess they have some sort of computer model going on. Uh, you'll notice that their firebox is sort of ovular in its shape. Uh, you know, I don't know if that plays into it. Now, Aaron Franklin, his knowledge and experience, uh, you can't discount it. Uh, I watched a video of his pretty recently uh, that, you know, he was talking about putting logs in different ways to get them to burn and uh, the solubility of smoke. The man, he knows science and he's going to know the science of, of these offset smokers. You know, when he built this thing, he knew what he was doing. That insulated firebox is shows that as well. All right. And here, you know, I always put in the numbers to me here in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, Georgia is a lot closer to me. Um, Gator Pits a lot further as well as Franklin Barbecue. So, you know, they would only say it was going to be around 600, 900 uh, for Franklin Barbecue Pits. Uh, you know, it's 590.97 there for, for Gator Pits. Gator Pits of Texas. So, you know, it's the, the lowest amount is that economical uh, shipping option from Workhorse that's 325. Of course, I might be able to, you know, pick up the pit myself uh, if I wanted to and maybe save myself even more, it being as close as it is. So, yeah, we just look at these numbers a little bit and you're going to notice that everything changes, uh, you know, slightly because of that. You know, um, now six seventy five a pound. Uh, you know, three forty a pound there um, for the workhorse pit, and uh, it changes to you know five twenty five a pound. The workhorse was always the best per pound because they give you so much metal. Uh, and you know, if you look down there at the uh, price per square inch, you know it's it's going to shift a little bit as well. In fact, I believe you know Gator Pits was winning in that area, but now it's up to four. Uh, you know, 376 there. And then with the combined, it's 275 and 279. So, um, you know, it just barely edges out the Gator Pits um, for me in, uh, in North Carolina. Uh, that is, you know, the proximity game uh, that, that really sort of takes hold in, in where you live. So, you know, that's going to come into account. Now, when we think about these pits, and these are my thoughts, I think that the Gator Pits of Texas is going to work really well for you, especially if you want to do that grilling in the main chamber. That's that's a great option there, uh, you know. Um, so, and I think that that's if you're planning on grilling for large numbers of people, large numbers of family members, you're going to have you know steaks or burgers that you're going to want to throw in there that huge main chamber and, and that charcoal grate in there, that's going to do it for you, you know? So um, that's a great option. If you're anywhere on the Western half of the country, uh, it's also going to be really good. Um, it's going to be really close. If you're looking at, you know, the economical fares, uh, the economical shipping for, for workhorse pits. If you live on the Eastern half of the country though, I think workhorse pits is going to be a really great option uh, and, and maybe other places too. It's also going to be really good for as a smoker. You know, I think that just as, as a workhorse smoker, you know, smoking meat, uh, I guess it's aptly named that way. 
it's gonna gonna do a really great job, especially with that thick, thick metal and the computational fluid dynamics. So it's I think that I would give that an edge, you know, if I were looking into getting it, getting one of these smokers. Um, that's that's the one that I would probably be be looking at myself, uh, you know, um, being where I am. The the Franklin barbecue pits, it's it's just so expensive, uh, and and you have to wait so long to get it too. Uh, I, I do believe in Aaron Franklin. I believe he's a, a genius, but uh, you know, I I wouldn't wait that long or pay that much. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's a really great smoker, but with options like Workhorse there that that's very, very similar, I just, that's not what I would do. And maybe there are other people out there who would, but um, yeah, I wouldn't. All right, and now we've got the Mill Scale 94 gallon versus Capo Cooktops 80 gallon versus Workhorse 1975 versus Gator Pits of Texas Party Edition. All right, and let's see what we've got here. All right, so the mill scale, 4150, cable cooktops, 3498.24, or, you know, with the second shelf, 3856.20, workhorse, 1975, 25.32, or, you know, adding that second shelf, uh, the cowboy firebox, and uh, that side cart as well. Again, it's going to be 2781 versus the Gator Pits Party Edition, which is 2,795. All right, and winners all around for the Workhorse 1975. All right, and now the quarter inch metal, and um, you know, this Workhorse 1975 is the only one with the thicker metal, so it's gonna take this one as well. All right, and then we've got the poundage here, 775 for the mill scale, 660. Now, that's my estimate for this Capo cooktops. Rob, he actually estimated 600. Um, I took that 80 gallons and uh, compared it to the 94 gallon, took that 775, and, you know, um, proportionally 660 would be what it would be. So that's what I thought, hey, maybe 660 is a good estimate. Uh, and then the workhorse 835 with that thick thick metal 650 for the party edition and uh you know dollar per pound 535 for for mill scale 530 for capo cooktops and then 584 with that extra shelf eight um three dollars and three cents for that workhorse uh you know just the the base model 333 uh for for the extras not bad uh, and then 430 for the Gator Pits Party Edition. So, uh, you know, Workhorse is going to take that again. Now, um, yeah, these these main grates, 828 for the mill scale. Remember, it has that shelf for the water pan, 902 for the Capo cooktops, uh, 1,092.8 for the Workhorse, impressive, and then 840 for the Gator Pits Party Edition. All right. And yes, the Workhorse 1975 is going to take it again. All right. And the mill scale, 94 gallon, uh, $501 per square inch, then $388 per square inch for the Capo cooktops. A little bit better there, you know. Um, 232 for the Workhorse, even better than uh, 254. That 336, you know, I got thinking, hey, I should put in a uh, powder coating. If you want a powder coating on the workhorse, it's very similar to, to that Gator Pits Party Edition at the 333. Uh, you know, that linseed oil uh, finish is really kind of a unfair advantage, but it is an advantage to the workhorse pits. So I can't, I can't discount it, you know? Uh, and it's bringing in those, those low, low numbers there. But I gave, uh, you know, a win for the Gar Gator Pits Party Edition anyway, uh, you know, for having the lowest for a powder coating. Now, uh, no option for second shelf for the mill scale. We've talked about that. It's uh, your, your basic smoker. Um, and then 572 for the Capo cooktop, 607.5 for the workhorse, and then 714. Uh, and it's two second shelves on that Gator Pits Party Edition. Now, remember, those two doors are going to be a lot easier to open. So if that's something that you're worried about, be a, a really deciding factor for you. 
And then 828 inches squared for the mill scale, you know, that's that's what the main grade is. So that's that's everything. Combined for the Capo cooktops, 1474. Combined for Workhorse, 1975, 1700.3. And then for the Party Edition, combined 1554. Okay. Workhorse takes it. Now, um, Capo cooktops, $261 per inch is squared. 164 and then 216 dollars per inch is squared now that 216 is the powder coating um so then 180 uh for dollars per inch is squared on um the party edition still wins for the powder coat but uh the workhorse 1975 is still gonna win uh not with the, the powder coat fireboxes so yeah that mill scale has a 20 by 24 cable cooktops 22 by 22 you know, and um, workhorse 27 by 25, uh, by far the largest here. And the party edition still has that 20 by 20, uh, the same one that's on the uh, Texas 1845. So it's it's going to be the smallest. Yeah. And I gave different medals for each one this time, gold, silver and bronze. Um, all right. And we're going to talk uh, just a second about stack height. We talked about it before with uh, the the previous Grovy Grill mashup here, um, you know, with the 1957 and the the Franklin Pits and the Texas 1845. So you know, uh, Gator Pits they're going to have the shortest stack. The rest of these have much taller stacks. That's what it what it comes down to. Um, so the airflow might be better in these other ones. So something to think about. All right, to me and NC. Yep, a lot in the shipping here. Uh, 4860 for the mill scale, 386111 um, with the, the Capo cooktops. Now that was with the 600 pounds, right? We only looked it up for 600 pounds, so that's why I didn't fill out the rest of this uh, for Capo cooktops. Uh, I think that it's probably closer to 650 or 660. So I just couldn't really go on. But if it is 600, that's that's the pricing there, um, you know. And then the workhorse, uh, 2957 and 3206 uh, with those extra features, and then 3385.97 for the party edition, so 590.97, which is the same price as the 1845 for shipping, so it doesn't change. Um, what they told me was that, you know, it's, it's the dimensions there. All right. And, and what we really want to see here is the next couple breakdowns, 627 per pound, uh, dollar per pound for the mill scale and 354 per pound or 384 per pound for the workhorse 75 and then 521 per pound. Um, you know, the workhorse always had it per pound because it uh, has so much metal. Uh, so the square inch is 587. Uh, dollar per square inch for the mill scale, um, two seventy one or two ninety three dollars per inch is squared, uh, and this is the main chamber or the main grade, I should say, for the workhorse, nineteen seventy five, four hundred three for dollar per inch is squared. Um, you know, the last time the the party edition one for the powder coat, uh, I didn't I didn't do the powder coat on this one. It might have still won, but uh, you know. The workhorse is just so much lower uh, that that's what I, I decided to focus on. Um, I did do the powder coat here on on this bottom part. So yeah, dollar eighty nine there for uh, the workhorse, then two forty one, um, and uh, yeah, so two forty one is that powder coating, and two eighteen is the powder coat again for the Gator Pits Party Edition. So again, the Gator Pit wins for powder coating. Uh, the recourse wins for the linseed oil. You know, it, it kind of depends on what you want there. If you don't want to be putting on the, the linseed oil finish, uh, you know, every year, uh, making it look nice and new every year, you know, and you want that powder coating, then, then Gator Pits is the way to go. All right, my thoughts. You know, if you live uh, in the northern part of the country, close to Toronto, Capo cooktops could be a really good option for you, especially if you're looking for something comparable to mill scale. Mill scale's multi generational uh, bid, you know, it being really simple. Uh, maybe I don't know enough about the components of all these these offset smokers to say, you know, 
this is the part that's going to wear out. Uh, I know that when I was watching the videos for Gator Pits that uh, Richie was was talking about, you know, reinforcing the the greats. You know, the greats are the ones that are, are, are probably the thing that are, are going to go in these things, which, you know, you can replace. So, you know, everything else, you know, I wonder about uh, really the hinges and, and all of them look like they have pretty solid hinges. To buy this thing, is it going to be around in 70 years uh, that your, your grandchildren are going to be cooking on it? I don't know. You know, it's really a hard question to answer. Millscale thinks that they, they've got that in a lock. Uh, Gator Pits of Texas is the oldest. I guess you could try to figure out, you know, who's had one from from the beginning and how it's doing, uh, you know. So it's it's a question out there. I think for the most part, these things get owned for a very long time. You know, you, you look on Facebook Marketplace, you don't see a whole lot of them coming up um, of the Gator Pits. These other companies are really new. Mill Scale, I think it's 2018. Workhorse, maybe 2019, maybe 2020. Capo Cooktops, you know, they put out this this uh, 80 gallon one really recently. I'm not entirely sure how long they've been in this this game though. For most of the southeast, you know, I would definitely think about going with that the workhorse. Uh, you know, the same sort of considerations. These these Gator Pits, they look like they're really fun at a party. You know, if you want to have uh, have the food all laid out, you know, come to the smoker, uh, have your, your grill going and then, and then put those burgers there. You know, it's right there. You're getting it from, from the grill, you know? Uh, so I think that is a really fun idea. Uh, or if you're not having large parties, you know, pretty regularly, that may not be worth it to you. Uh, and again, you know, these are our smokers. So that whole smoking component, uh, you want to have parties with the Gator Pits of Texas. Uh, you know, if you do, put it in the comments below. Tell me, show me pictures. Hey, that would be great. Put something in the comments for us. All right. And yeah, um, you know, the mill scale, if you're looking to, to pass this down to your grandkids, maybe that is the way to go. I don't know. Uh, I know that the owner of Meat Church, he's got one of these things. He wants to sell them at his store. Uh, so he really believes in them. Um, uh, they're, they're just a little too rich for my blood. Uh, I can't see it's, it's kind of the same with the, the Franklin barbecue pits, even though this one's a bit more accessible, uh, but costs about the same, even being a, a, a bit bigger, I believe. Yeah. I, and, and I think that I probably would get the mill scale over the Franklin barbecue pits. Uh, I love Aaron Franklin, but, but I'm not going to buy his pit. So all right, and that's the end of this very, very long episode. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, you have one of these pits. Put your comments in the comment section. You know, help us help us all out to know, is this a good one? Is it a bad one? Uh, holding up? Is it going to hold up for your grandkids? Yeah, let's, uh, let's pool our knowledge and, and get through all this together. So... Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking. And, uh, you know, y'all, go get your grill on.